Hi and welcome. My name is Patrick Cuchillo, the head of missions at Christ Vision Ministries. More than a statistic, you know, I'm persuaded that it was never God's intention for us just to pass on as some part of demography, male, female, lived here, went to school there, worked here, was buried here. Just a mere statistic. Well, stay with me as we look at this subject more than a statistic, as we interrogate the life of a very interesting Bible character. His name is Jabez. Jabez. Now, tucked away somewhere in 1 Chronicles chapter 4 uh, is a very interesting passage of Scripture. In fact, the entire chapter, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, is a genealogy, it's a history of a genealogy of some clans of Judah. Not the entire clan of Judah, but some clans of Judah. And it's an interesting passage where it just gives statistics. So and so beget so and so, who beget so and so, so and so's wife was so and so, so and so had two wives. And it's a kind of passage if you were to read from verse 1 of First Chronicles. Uh, chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 8 you might not make much of that passage of scripture but it's interesting that the chronicler the spirit of God who is the divine author of the scriptures when he gets to verse 9 he interrupts this list this geneal genealogy this demography uh, this list is interrupted by an account of a man who somewhat pops out uh, of the genealogy, pops out of the list. Now, it's a story of a man called Jabez. When you read his story, he is born, his story gets given in two verses of scripture. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. When you read uh, Jabez, about Jabez, you realize this is an account of a man who was born an emblem of pain but he died an emblem of honor. He was born um, as a nondescript person, but he died as a hero. He was born in some very obscure situation, but he dies in the limelight. I think it's a story of a man who refused to pass on as a mere statistic there is something he did about it. So let's discuss what really did Jabez do. Anyway, before we delve into that, the Bible tells us in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, uh, verse 9, now Jabez. So imagine you're reading a story, um, genealogy, a list, then all of a sudden the account changes. And so when you read 1 Chronicles chapter 4, when you get to verse 9, your attention is picked. Your interest is picked because of the detail about this man Jabez. The Bible says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. For his mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. That's the introduction. So here is a man who is born to his mom and probably she experienced a near-death situation giving birth to him and the best way to remember her experience was to name him job is to name him pain because his name mean, means pain but it's interesting the way the Spirit of God puts the words together is because the introduction is that now Jabez was more honorable the focus is not about his painful childbirth the focus is about his honor that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers he might have been born an emblem of pain but certainly by this point in time and I dare say he died not as an emblem of pain but an emblem of honor verse 10 says but Jabez cried to God the God of Israel saying oh that you would bless me 
that you'll enlarge my territory, that you'll keep your hand upon me, that you will keep me from harm and that I may be free from pain. And the Bible says, and God granted his request. Now, I want us to focus on just those few verses that unpack the life of this man, Jabez, who was more than a statistic. I can imagine Jabez growing up, uh, going to school, growing up in his neighborhood. And as he went to school, as he played with his fellow children, I can imagine Jabez introducing himself. Hi, guys. My name is Jabez. And guys go like, Jahu? Jabez. I can imagine guys saying, did your mom lack creativity of all the possible names to give somebody that she would call you pain? She's like, ah, that's my mom's story. But then they would follow up and hear the story of how his mom went through a painful experience giving birth to him. But he's a man who realized that whereas I may have been born an emblem of pain, whereas I may have carried this tag and this label through life, because he wore a, a table, he a label rather, he wore a tag through life. But one day he decided to do something about it. Now what did Jabez do that made him more honorable, that made him more than a statistic, that made him die an emblem of honor? What did Jabez do? Three things I will share with us and I will be done. The first thing that Jabez did is that he trusted God. He trusted God. When you and I trust God regardless of the background we're coming from, our narrative changes. God is the ultimate game changer. God is the ultimate narrative changer. When a man and a woman trust in God, their narrative must change. You see, Jabez must have lived under the weight of this label. Pain, pain, pain. You see, I can relate with this experience because I come from a part in East Africa, a part in Kenya where names are very significant. And you find all manner of names. Parents give their children all manner of names. I know of a particular school, not very far from my home, that had a very interesting name. Until recently when the residents of this village decided, no, let's take responsibility and do something about the name of our school. Now, this school um, is from a part in Kenya called Kisi. Now, the school was called Nyakimincha, Nyakimincha Primary School. Nyakimincha is a local dialect from Kenya, which translated means last or tail, tail, Nyakimincha. Now, this, what is very interesting when you read the accounts about this school, the students who went through this school didn't do particularly well at national exams, that being primary school. The school didn't feature very well. When uh, the national exams would be done and there would be a listing of schools, how they performed across the nation, this interesting school, Nyakimencha, was rarely in the limelight. They were actually featured as constantly at the tail, true to their name Nyakimincha, which is translated from a local dialect meaning tail. Now, I'm not one of those who is sold to the theology of names where we must interrogate every name that we carry, we must do uh, some spiritual archaeology to the name that we've been given and find out whether this name uh, has some spiritual connotations that uh, is, is curtailing our progress. Whereas I may not be given to that persuasion, but it is true that some names are closely associated with the character and the behavior that follows those, those names. It is just a fact. So there is something about names. This is actually true that we see in the life of Jabez. But Jabez decided to do something about it. And the thing that he did, that I encourage you to do, those of you who probably are struggling with names or struggling with labels, is to trust God. Because when you invite the God of Israel into your situation, the narrative must change. Jabez trusted God. Having labored, toiled under the weight of this name, Jabez, 
he decided one day to call on the God of Israel. And you know what? His story changed. He was born an emblem of pain and sorrow. But when the God of Israel stepped into his life, his narrative changed. Are you going through life right now under the weight of a label, of a tag that probably was placed on you by a parent, by a person in authority? Um, and maybe it's a negative label that has weighed you down. Probably some of you are carrying the label useless. You're carrying the label hopeless. You're carrying the label nothing. There are all manner of negative labels that you probably might find yourself occurring through life and seem to be affecting your progress in life. I came to just remind us this day, it is, it is possible to invite the God of Israel uh, into that situation and that narrative will change. Jabez is a classic example. Let's keep this conversation going on more than a statistic because I believe that you need to start somewhere. The place to start is by trusting God and inviting God into that situation. So maybe here you are, you are stuck, you are paralyzed on account of a label and you are thinking that you are just a mere statistic. I came to tell you, you are more than a statistic, not a mere statistic. God's desire and design is that you would not pass on as a mere statistic, but more than a statistic. And if this is your heart's desire, let's invite the God of Israel into our situation right now as I pray for you. Father, I pray and ask that as many as can identify with this conversation, would you grant them the boldness and the courage to invite you, the God of Israel, into their situation that their narrative may change, like that of Jabez of old. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's keep this conversation going on our social media pages, on our Instagram, uh, on Facebook, uh, on our YouTube channel, and also um, uh, on Twitter. This is Sitam Church Online, being the Youth Cafe. My name is Patrick Cuccio. Let's keep this conversation going.